and the extreme difference between Christianity and every other religion. And Richie said it this morning. You know, every other religion tells you that you got to do certain things to get to God. But Christianity tells you that the gulf is, is too great. Nobody can get to God. But what God has done through Jesus, he's crossed the gulf. And he's gotten to us and made it possible for us to enjoy his presence and love him. And looking at this worship team this morning, I'm noticing these people that are, that are leading us into worship, the Christian Fellowship School influence that's there out of these nine kids that are up there, six of them are Christian Fellowship product. Absolutely awesome what God does in our school. We appreciate so much you all praying for us, encouraging the staff, lifting them up. And for every single teacher that's in the public school that, that labors so diligently under a different umbrella where Jesus is not welcome, where God is not invited in to honor him and to do his work there. And those who homeschool who are determined that their children are the highest value, the most precious gift from God, that's what we all believe. Pray for us. When you think of us, pray for us. Let's pray now for, for this, these teachers. Dear God, we give you honor and glory and praise. What a good God you are. And Lord, we know that education is really important. God, we need knowledge. We need understanding. We need to be able to think and think clearly. God, it's your truth. Your truth that sets us free. We honor you as the Lord of our lives. We confess every single, every single person in this building right now, we confess Jesus is Lord. You're Lord over this facility. You're Lord God over all of this grounds. You're Lord over every single student that's enrolled in this school or every teacher, every family, God. You are Lord. We absolutely Believe with all our hearts that Jesus, you are Lord. God, we bow to you. We humbly submit to you. Your Lordship, let it rule and reign in our lives. God, we give this year to you. We dedicate this year to you every single day, every single moment, every class. Do your work. And God, you always do a complete and good work. Do your work in our lives, Lord. We submit to you. We submit to the Lordship of Jesus. Lord, bless this year with your presence. Bless this year with growth and transformation in the lives of the students, in the lives of the teachers. In our lives, God, rule and reign in every single area. And Again, God, we honor you and thank you for the privilege that we have to be professional teachers and to love God with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our mind. We honor you, Jesus. We give this year to you, and thank you, God, for the good work that you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Rowley. Thank you, educators, for praying for you. Mr. Rowley, we're blessed to have you in this place. <clears throat> I, we had the pastoral staff at our house this week. We just all got together and put something on Facebook. I'm telling you, we are blessed. We are so blessed. Just looking forward to what God has in the future for us. Hallelujah. God is good. You know what, last week was awesome, we had our friends from Memphis come up, and I'm so thankful for your hospitality and welcoming them into this place, I loved it, although I will say this, y'all are going to have to help me this morning, I got used to that, <laughs> they're awesome, I'm just excited about what God's doing there, remember that show The X-Files, kind of weird. But they had a catchphrase, motto. You remember what it was, anybody? 
The truth is out there. Thank you very much. We have one fan of the X-Files in here. I'm glad the illustration landed this morning. The truth is out there. I want to speak on truth this morning. You know, regardless of what the world tells you, truth is not relative. Truth is not just whatever you think. You do what's right in your own eyes and then you kind of justify it. That's not what truth is. Truth is absolute. Truth is inerrant. And we find the truth of the word right here in our hands. That's why it's so important to drink it in, to feast on the word of God, not as a religious obligation, but what you're doing is you are feeding your spirit and feeding your mind truth. And it comes out in the craziest times, in the best times, when you feed on truth. But the truth is, we live in a world that is so hostile to Christianity. But really, on a greater level, they're hostile to truth. And they're trying to redefine what truth actually is. You know, when truth comes in contact with us, if we don't like it, let me tell you, it doesn't really change the fact that it's still truth. I could stand on the pinnacle of this church and I could jump off saying, I believe that I won't hit the concrete. I can say that. And I can stand up there and genuinely believe it with everything inside of me. It's not going to happen. I'm just going to step out there and I'm not going to fall. I believe it. I don't care what the truth of gravity says. I believe that that's irrelevant. I'm going to step out there. Let me tell you, the first step, kerplunk, and how great was his fall. See, truth is absolute, and we find the truth in Scripture. Let me tell you, you've got to have that down in your getter, and you've got to believe that with everything on the inside of you. If this is not absolute, then we are wasting our time. If the truth that we find in Scripture is not the truth, and this book, if it's not inerrant, if it's just pick and choose what you like, we are wasting our time here in church this morning. It's all true or none of it's true. We've got to believe that and settle it, that this book is absolute, it's inerrant, it's the truth, it's the word of God to us, every word of it. I even believe the two words on the front that says, Holy Bible, it's still true. This morning, I want to speak, I'm going to call this, we're getting back to our series, you can be turned into Acts chapter 19. I want to speak on an inconvenient truth. And no, I'm not talking about the Al Gore film on global warming. But I want to entitle this this morning, An Inconvenient Truth. And... I, Lord willing, I'm not going to speak very long this morning. Stop laughing. I mean it. I'm trying to be sensitive to Family Sunday. If you'll listen quickly, I'll preach quickly. Do we have a deal? Acts chapter 19, verse 21. Last, well, I don't remember the last time we were in our series. We took a break, but we're back. Verse 21, it says, Now after these events, Paul resolved in the spirit to pass through Macedonia and Achaia and go to Jerusalem, saying, After I've been there, I must also see Rome. And having seen, having sent into Macedonia two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, he himself stayed for a while. About that time, there arose no little disturbance concerning the way. Say the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The way is the word of God. It's the gospel. It's the message that Paul was teaching. They became followers of the way. For a man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Artemis, who was a god, goddess, piece of trash, brought no little business to the craftsmen. These he gathered together with the workmen in similar trades and said, Men... 
you know that from this business we have our wealth. And you see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away a great many people, saying that gods made with hands are not gods. That's truth. It's truth. Uh, I've said this before in one of my trips to India, uh, every trip to India, I've been there eight times. You see, everybody has little figures that's their God. And I feel so sorry for them that their God can fit on their dash. Not making fun of them, I feel heartily sorry for them. That's what Demetrius is saying. Saying, here we are in the temple of Artemis, great Ephesians. And I am a silversmith by trade. And Paul is coming in, preaching this word, getting people to follow the way, follow Jesus. He's done it in all of Asia, and he has the audacity to say that gods are not made with human hands. I know that's just a, a hard truth to grab a hold of this morning. But gods are not made with human hands. He said, if he brings this here, you and I both are going to be out of business. I'm a silversmith. You know that's how we get our money. We make these silver shrines to Artemis. We sell them. He might be speaking the truth. But I don't care if he's speaking the truth because I want to eat tomorrow. I need somebody to buy my shrine. I need somebody to buy the hands of the gods that I'm making with my hands. This is crazy. He's turned away a great many people saying that gods made with hands are not gods. And there is danger not only that this trade of ours may come into disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis may be counted as nothing and that she may even be deposed from her magnificence she whom all Asia and the world worship father in the name of Jesus as we get in the word this morning father I ask that you will open our eyes to truth and I pray out of everything that happens today Lord that you would put us back on the path of seeking truth help us to get over ourselves Help us to get over our opinions. Help us to get over the things that we don't like. Help us to get over the things that cause us an offense, cause us issues, Lord. And help us to seek truth. And you've given it to us right here, God. Lord, let me decrease and you increase and receive your word with open hearts this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Here he is inconvenienced because of the truth of Paul. Notice in the story it doesn't say, I don't believe what he's saying. It doesn't say, I disagree with what he's saying. What it says is, this truth of his is going to cause me problems. But we've gotten to that place in our culture where truth comes in conflict with what we think. We often throw truth out the high side of the house and just stand on our beliefs, stand on our opinions. Let me tell you, that is the road to destruction. It's the road to complete disaster in your life. I've always said that the worst thing that I could ever do is to wake up in the morning and find myself opposing truth. This man made idols from silver. He was in bondage. And he didn't even know that he was in bondage because he refused to see the truth. Let me tell you, if there's ever a word that needed to go out in our nation today, it's that word right there. There is a problem in our culture today. It's an ignoring of truth and a refusal to see it. Now, we've done a really good job of not doing what the Scripture says, of speaking the truth in love. But the truth is culture refuses to look at truth. They want it suppressed and they want it silenced. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, The God of this world has blinded their eyes. Let me tell you, there's a blindness rampant in our nation today, in this world today. I think it's Satan's primary strategy to keep people from seeing the truth. Because if he can keep them from seeing the truth, you know what he can do? He can keep them in bondage. So they stirred it up. They started stirring the people up. 
If people believe this word that he's speaking, I don't care if it's true or not, it's going to destroy our lifestyle. It's going to mess up the way that we live. I might have to downsize my house because my uh, Idols R Us is going to go out of business. They're going to foreclose. I don't care if it's truth or not. I don't want to change. I know that doesn't sound familiar to you. But let me tell you something. Truth is a powerful thing. Truth is a dangerous thing. Let me tell you what's even more dangerous than truth. Knowledge of truth. And if you take the knowledge of truth and turn that into application of truth, let me tell you what you have in your life. Freedom. Because the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Truth is a powerful thing. Truth is a dangerous thing. And when you get truth down on the inside of you, bondages start falling off like that. Why? Because the word of God is true. He says, as you know truth, it will set you free. Why is the world in bondage today? Because they refuse to see truth. If they would let truth down in their spirit, chains would fall off this nation, guys. They don't need us condemning them. They don't need us badgering them. They need us showing them the truth in love because once they see the truth, freedom will start ringing across this nation again because knowledge of the truth will set you free. And as Christians, we are to be truth seekers. Truth is the most powerful and dangerous thing in the world. They didn't want to change their way of life. But what we have instead, we have Christians that are the most biblically illiterate generation that the world has ever seen. Now, I don't say that to condemn you. Read your three chapters tonight. That's not what I'm saying, although you need to read the Bible. It's not a religious obligation. When you are refusing to feed your spirit, what you're doing is depriving yourself of truth. And I don't say that condemningly, but you hold the key in your hand to the deliverance of the nations. That key is in your hand. The deliverance of the nations is in your hand. Right here, the truth of the word of God has the power to set people free. And it's time for us to start feasting on this book again. Every answer in life that we're looking for, the truth of this right here will change it. Are you lost this morning? Are you lost and don't know Jesus in a terrible condition, hell bound? Well, the truth is, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord, you will be saved. <laughs> truth will bring you from a place of lost and hell bound to saved and covered by the blood of Jesus if you apply that truth to your life. What about your finances? Uh-oh. You're going to start stepping on toes. I can't afford to pay my tithes this week. I can't afford to give. Giving is not for the church. Giving is for you. Well, I can't afford to do that. But the truth says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse and test me and see if I won't open the windows of heaven. Until Now, there's a verse at the end of that. It says, until there is no more need. That's awesome. Test me and see if I won't open the windows of heaven and bless you until there is no more need. Look it up. Well, I say I can't afford it. But the truth says, if you do this, then watch what God will do. Truth has the power to set you free. It doesn't matter the situation. Well, I'm an alcoholic. It's not hurting anybody. It's just my own struggle. It's private. 
the truth says, don't be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. You shall know the truth, and the truth... Bring the full tithe in and test me so that I don't open the windows of heaven until there's no more need. You shall know the truth and you're lost. But if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall know the truth and well, I just hate myself. I've got a poor image of myself. Nobody's ever liked me and just, I, I've started believing them. I don't even like myself. I see what everybody's talking about when I look in the mirror. I get it now. I'm a terrible person. But the truth says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. See, you've got to fight those lies of the enemy with the truth of the word of God. But I don't even like myself. But God likes you a whole lot. You shall know the truth and... Well, I'm sick. I'm hurting all over my body. I have a need of healing. It's just never going to get any better. I hurt to walk. I hurt to get out of bed. He himself bore our infirmities. And by his stripes we are healed. See, we can live in that all of our lives or we can get the truth of the word of God in us and we will know the truth and... This one hits this culture. I don't know if I'm a boy or a girl. This isn't making fun of anybody. I'm just telling you the truth of the word of God. They're trying to remove the even word gender. But the Bible says in the beginning, he created them male and female. That's a God creation. Don't struggle with that. Know the truth and... You see, what the world needs is a knowledge of truth. They don't need to be harped on. They don't need to be condemned. They need Christians to stand up full of the Word of God and speak the truth in love. The truth will set you free. You know what? I hate the person sitting beside me in church. They didn't speak to me 15 years ago when I walked in, and I will never forget it. You laugh. Some of you have been in my office over things sillier than that. It's just the truth. You can sit there in unforgiveness all your life, or you can read what Jesus says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You shall know the truth and... Well, we can just live in that in misery. Well, I'm a bondage. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to pornography. But nobody knows. It's not hurting anybody. It's just on my own personal computer. Nobody will ever know. It doesn't hurt anything. It's my own little playground. But the truth says he's come to set at liberty those that are captive. Uh-oh. So you can sit there living in bondage and addiction or you can get the truth of the word of God in you and realize he's come to set the captive free. And you can know the truth and... There's power in truth. You can see now why the devil tries to suppress truth. Because truth is powerful. And it can change this nation. Talked about unforgiveness. You know what? I've had a disagreement and I'm right. Bless God. I'm not giving an inch. They're wrong. And I'm right. And I'm going to make them see that I'm right. And when they fall on their face, I'm going to stand over them, look down my long nose and say, I told you so, I was right. You can live in disagreements 
or you could get the truth of the word of God in you where it says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they're called children of God. Let me tell you, you can be right and still be so wrong. You know, every time I said the words, I'm sorry, it didn't mean that I thought I was wrong. I'm telling you the truth. It meant that I love a relationship with you more than my own pride. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they're called children of God. So you can live in a disagreement with somebody, or you can get the truth of the word of God in you, and you shall know the truth, and truth is a powerful thing. Man, it can change this nation. Suppressing the truth of God in your life. That's what Demetrius was trying to do. Paul come bearing the truth of the way. He said, I don't really care what your truth is. And that's what the world will try to say today. I hate that phrase, your truth. That's your truth. This is my truth. Reminds me of the book of Judges where everybody did what was right in their own eyes. Let me tell you, if it angers everybody in the nation it's not my truth it's his truth it's the truth it's the only truth it's the way the truth and the life it's his truth well that's awful dogmatic let me tell you I'm a fundamentalist Christian that believes in the truth of the word of God and I won't give an inch on a word of it but instead, we engage people and we get in arguments with them. You're wrong, I'm right, blah, 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 blah. I tell you, stop making Christianity an argument. Love people. Serve people. Show them that you genuinely love them. There's a lot of people that see you in your life and their thoughts are, I don't want to be like that. I get it. I've been in church for 39 years, actually 40 years, mom carried me in her womb in church. <laughs> Seen a lot of stuff. And I've thought that. I don't want to be like that. Why? Because we're not living what he's called us to live. You're carriers of the truth. Don't compromise it. Don't compromise the truth of this book. Don't water it down for anybody. Love them. Speak it in love. You don't have to go to people and say, you're going to hell. The truth is, Jesus came, so you don't have to. Love people. Give them truth in love and watch chains fall off. The problem with this nation is they have gotten to a place where they've forgotten or don't want to hear truth. And that's what happened with Demetrius. The truth came. He didn't care what the truth was. I'm not changing because I like my life the way it is. That's your truth. I've got my truth. My truth is I'm a successful entrepreneur, idol maker. I founded Silver Idols Incorporated. And I'm not changing for anybody. I like it. That's your truth. That's fine. Stay over there in that corner. Just keep it away from me. Does that sound familiar? When we're carrying the truth of the Word of God. Why don't we do that? Well, I can see one or two reasons. One... We're not full of the truth ourselves. You can't give something you don't have. If you're not feeding yourself with the truth of the word of God, then anything that comes your way can seem like truth. Did an experiment a few weeks ago, and I gave a few phrases that are just Christianese, but none of them are in the Bible. <laughs> Spare the rod, spoil the child. We all know that's in there truth is we can't tell the difference between the truth of God's word and what our own minds are and some of you sitting in here this morning I know it because I've done it my whole life I can read something to you straight out of the word of God 
this is going to hurt. I can read something straight out of the word of God. And the first thought in your mind is, I don't know if I believe that or not. (laughs) I don't really care what you believe. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter to me what you believe. If I read something out of the word of God and you disagree with it, your argument's with him, not with me. We have elevated our own opinions and our own thoughts and our own life over the truth of the word of God, guys, and it's dangerous. It's dangerous for Christianity, and that opinion of yours won't do jack for your neighbor down the street who's living in bondage. But the truth will set them free. It's time for us to recapture the truth of the word of God and stop living a life of, I don't know, I don't know if I like that. I like it the way I am. If I see my life in conflict with this book, guess what? It's time for Richie to change. And I see it every day. I see things that I think, I'm going I'm to live this way. I like this. I like this attitude. And then the truth of the word of God will get in there. Richie, that's not how I feel, God. But that's how I feel. Yesterday, I was a bear. Oh, she'll just remove that woman. No, <laughs> just kidding. I was a bear. I mean, my attitude went south fast. I know you're shocked. That happens to the preacher too. And I lived in that for a little bit. Jenny bore the brunt of it. And I felt totally justified. She had done not one thing, but... You know how you always take it on in the person you love the most? Don't do that. That's not right. I was just being a bear. She was so good. She come in, and then she walked in the other room, and God started dealing with me. Richie, I care about your actions right now. And I saw that my actions were in my attitude, my heart was in conflict with the truth of the word of God. And I had a moment to think there. Do I continue on the path that I'm on? Or do I see that the truth of the word of God is, you shouldn't be like this, Richie. And I thought, Lord, I really want to look like you. I see that's truth. But man, that hurts. I didn't say it was going to be easy. Because following a path of truth is a lifetime of dying to yourself. You can't be a truth seeker if you're not willing to die to yourself. It's impossible. It's the foundation of being a truth seeker. And what I believe is truth. If a person is seriously hungry for truth, the end of that search will always be right here. I have people coming to me all the time that's seeking truth in issue and questioning things. That doesn't bother me at all. If you're seeking truth, I genuinely believe that a search of truth will lead you straight into the arms of Jesus because he's the epitome of truth. He's the essence of truth. And he's given us his word as truth. Can't you see this morning the importance of truth? You shall know the truth and... It doesn't matter what the issue is you're struggling with. Put that right next to the truth found in this book. And if you know that and apply that in your life, you're about to see a change. Come on up, Ralph. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the truth that you've given us. Lord, and in front of all my brothers and sisters this morning, I publicly confess Lord, I have not feasted on truth to the level that I need to. Lord, and there's been times I have weighed in on my own opinion and thoughts. God, and I ask for your forgiveness of that. We are carriers of the truth of God's word. And the importance of it is that truth has the power to make chains fall off like that. Lord, and we give you praise for that. Lord, let us know the truth and let us speak the truth with a love that you came to us in, God. In Jesus' name I pray.
Amen. Brother Ralph came to me. He actually messaged me yesterday in a lost text message that never showed up. I want him to share this word God's laid on his heart, and then we're going to be dismissed. Unless you have to leave, please don't leave because you've got to hear this on account of him. You know, Jesus left. He said, I will send you a comforter and a helper, and he will teach you and guide you in all your ways. This day, I need all the above. Two weeks ago, 1 a.m., Monday morning, I was dreaming, and he took me back to about 10 years ago while I was under some of these pews here on a Sunday night. And I was dreaming, and I was saying the same thing. I was right under those pews there, and when I spoke the words, I was, I was talking in my dream. And I was saying, you are my people. And when I woke up, I heard myself saying that. And I said it again. I didn't even, I didn't try it to. You are my people. And that night, I was, you are my people. You are my people. And then he took me to this scripture here. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 12. And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heavens that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I sent pestilence among my people. Listen, if my people, which are called by name, my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will hear their land. How is it? You know, I've always thought of that scripture as a national prayer for Israel or even for America. But I'm wondering how is it that he's saying my people and their wicked ways in the same verse? I don't. And then he started bringing some people to me that I uh, acquainted with. There are some couples at work and we'll sit around you know, in the break room and we'll say, well, Saturday we're going to go to Lake. Sunday we're going to go to church. And uh, when they leave, you'll see they have necklaces with a cross on them. And you walk by their car and they'll have a chain hanging and they have a cross which that's all right but the thing is none of uh, it's a, a number of them that's not married and tony can tell you that they're living together and then one day i was in my work area and i heard somebody hollering and screaming so i looked around the corner and there was a guy up on a scissor lift and there was another guy standing down there and i mean he was cussing at him and yelling well, here he went up, the scissor left. And I mean, he was in his face cussing him. And then they come down, and I asked that guy, he's cussing. I said, why did he do that? He said, I don't know. It's the second time he's done that. And every evening, this guy that was doing the cussing, he gets in his truck, and he drives off. And if you look on his tailgate, he's got a little fish emblem on the back of it. It's got a cross Me and my wife, we have some friends that we've known for 24 or 25 years. It's two women. They live together and they have a relationship. And every time the doors are open at church, they go. And this past month, I just got done teaching 
vacation Bible school. Then there's two guys that we know that live together. They have a relationship. Every Sunday, this one gets up. He goes to church that he was raised in, and he plays the piano for him. So he brought those to me, and uh, I was laying there, and he took me back, which at the time I thought, that is weird, 45 years ago when I was about 11 or 12 years old. I had a pair of cowboy boots that I had wore out. They were leaking water, and it was just wore out. The top part of the leather looked brand new. So I thought, well, I'm going to cut that top part off of both of them. I thought, what can I make? So I thought, well, someday I'm out on a handgun. I know that's not politically correct to say. <laughs> And I made me a pair of cow, uh, a holster, punched holes in it, and I stitched it with that leather. And I got a piece of metal, and I shaped it into my initials, RL. And I built me a fire, stuck it in that fire, and it got red hot. I remember looking at it. I stuck it to that holster, and I seared it in there. That's 45 years ago. I ran across, I've got a bunch of junk that I've kept over my life. <laughs> I ran across that last year, and it still looks brand new, and you can rub your hands across that RL, and it's still black where it. And the Lord, I'm sitting there in bed, laying there thinking, what in the world? I thought, and I thought, well, it was that nutty buddy I had before I went to bed. It's messed me up. <laughs> <laughs> he took me to this scripture <laughs> First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 what's his first word or third or fourth <laughs> now the spirit speaketh expressly I don't know if that's anywhere else in the Bible or not that word right there that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron forbidden to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Then somebody asks, what's next? <laughs> I started groaning in my spirit. <laughs> I said, Lord, what's it going to take? And I started praying in the Spirit. God, people, well, that's what it's going to take. That's the only thing that can take, can cut through that somebody that their conscience has been seared with a hot iron in my I thought, my goodness, that's a bad shape to be in. But church, we have got to, we're going to have to get on that. <laughs> it's the only way through the Spirit. That's a good word, bro. I love you too. <laughs> Truth has power. Remember, my dad told me something years ago. He said, Richie, I've heard people say a lot that the truth, that the word of God is sharp, sharper than a two-edged sword. And then he said, but I responded to them, are you using it like a butcher? 
or like a surgeon. Speak the truth in love and watch knowledge of the truth. Just make chains fall off. Let's stand to our feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today. Lord, we've confessed, we've seen the truth of your word. Lord, I pray over this church, Lord, that we would not be standing on a foundation of lies or, or a seared conscience like Ralph said, Father, return us to the pure, unadulterated, absolute truth of the word of God. Lord, you've given it to us, Lord. We've dishonored it. We've disrespected it, Father. Lord, we've not let it take the precedence in our life that we need, and we certainly haven't spoken it in love the way that we need to, Lord. Lord, you've given us the key. Lord, and I pray right now we would rise to the occasion and to the task. Let us hunger for truth, Lord, the truth of the word of God, Lord, and let us stand on that foundation and use us, Jesus, as ambassadors for you, Lord. And I pray that chains would fall off, God, as knowledge of the truth just hits person after person after person, Father. That addictions and bondages and attitudes and mindsets, Father, and sin patterns, Father, would fall off as acquisition of truth takes its hold, Father. Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life. And right now we speak life over where there's been death and that seared conscience. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I love you guys. You can be dismissed the morning. We'll see you tonight at 630.
Oh. 